আসসালামু আলাইকুম ডিয়ার ভিউয়ার্স ওয়েলকাম ব্যাক আপনারা সবাইকে স্বাগত আবারো আমরা আলাপ করছিলাম ডেফ মুসলিম কে নিয়ে আপনারা এখনো ফোন করতে পারেন আমাদের সাথে আপনাদের পরামর্শ দিতে পারেন এবং উই গোনা টক अबाउट নাও দ্য সার্ভিসেস অলসো অ্যাক্টিভিটিজ ইউ গাইস ডু আপনারা সবাই এতে জড়িত হইতে পারেন আজকে ইনশাআল্লাহ উই ওয়ার গোনা টক अबाउट ডেফ রান সামথিং ইউ ডু এভরি ইয়ার নাও ইজন ইট Samir bhai, would you like to say something about deaf run? What does it mean, deaf run? Well, uh, when I started Ali Shah, that was the first ever event that I took part in, Deaf Run 2012. Um, to me, back then, it didn't really mean much. It was just that what it was called, deaf run, and I just assumed that it was deaf people doing a run. And I didn't know what the cause, why they're running for, why they're doing this, what type of event it was. But when I got to the actual event on that day, It was it was really raining that day so it was a, it was a pouring down with rain so the day started off a bit slow and when I got there early morning uh we set up the mark stalls we were given our different roles and I myself was a post on the run because they had to allocate volunteers to show which way the brothers should run or people were just going to run off track into some field probably and get lost especially when it's raining <laughs> yeah it was raining so it was just standing there But I'm there is a good experience because there was a lot of it was a big turnout and to me so myself I was thinking like it wouldn't be that big of a turnout because it's like I've never heard of it before that was the first time I come across it but looking at the turnout and the buzz itself it was amazing I mean there was a lot of deaf community and not it wasn't just deaf community there was also the people can hear come in finding out even people walking by saying what's going on here let's go find out and that itself it it boosts the awareness of the deaf community and Yeah, the what well, my view on the deaf one is the name itself is an actual deaf one and I think Do they cheat? Anyone was cheating? No, I'm uh, sure. Che- come on. Come on. <laughs> you see something. Mean, okay, maybe in one race, I mean, I got tired. I did cheat myself. <laughs> oh cheating. no. Not cheat as in I, I was expecting you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I was like <laughs> <laughs> He knows now. He knows now. But we were just running for just fun. We wasn't running for the actual race. Sure. But then back then, yeah, I was a bit unfit. I'm still I'm unfit, but yeah, it was it's, it's quite hard. <laughs> I think it's two kilometers to run, right? It's two miles, actually. Two miles, yeah. See, that's, it's quite a long it's run. It's not, it's like... It's well, I found it run long. Shouldn't have cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold you to that. <laughs> so how did you, uh, did you have a fun? Yeah, I did, I did enjoy myself. It was good because um, it's like, it was like a, so it was like a big event. It was Be- yeah, because it was the first time for you you've been there. Yeah. What did you notice? What did you see what people are doing? Uh, first, when like I came I'm across... Like, I'm talking about our, you know, uh, dear and deaf brothers yeah. and you know, sisters. I'm watching. What did you see in there? Uh, when I first looked over, you see a lot of like people signing, using their hand gestures just to communicate. So I found it, n- I wouldn't say weird, it was just different, like out of my usual, because during my, that's when I finished secondary, so there's not much deaf brothers and sisters that were within my secondary itself. So this was my first time where there's a lot of people doing sign language, and I'm, I, fe- I, fe- I felt left out that I time. I hope thinking. you didn't think they were learning karate. No, uh, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't that. <laughs> no, I didn't. It, that it, I felt really left out that time, and then it just hits you thinking like, we've been in that situation and you're where you're the lower side of the community and there's more of people that are deaf you feel like maybe that's how they feel in the wider community oh man so it was kind of touching and like maybe like you should look into it more and i mean it was a good buzz everyone was smiling there was no sad faces anywhere even though it was rainy everyone was happy because there's everyone looking into the deaf brothers and they felt welcomed into the community and it was like more of the first time for them to like is the respect that they felt they felt yeah. you guys are respecting yeah. them welcoming them the valuing them that's mm-hmm. that is that is something you know subhanallah it's, 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 it's and it wasn't just like it wasn't me by myself we there was obviously a couple of friends and sisters from our school that took part and we all were like well wow, this was like an amazing opportunity to come down and take part and you see a lot of happiness you, do, you feel happy inside watching someone else be happy and taking part in different events That's did you have did you have to get anyone uh, in the running because i've been getting a lot of texts from uh, <laughs> ziavai <laughs> ziavai and uh, he said to me how many are you getting i said i'll try hard <laughs> oh no th- i got uh, i got i think th- some family members on the run just for the fun yeah Fantastic. and fundraise i've been uh, myself i did fundraise as well for the run <laughs> um you know touch on that so, so yeah he's kind of covered all aspect of aspects of it i actually was again that was the first one of the first events i've done as well which is deaf run and when it was pouring down on my heart dropped i was like all the hard work maybe it's gone down the drain but let me assure you that was probably one of the most blessed events Hamdulillah. we've held alhamdulillah it's like that was the first ever probably in the community where deaf people and the hearing community came together 
and did something together as one unit. As in that was the main aim behind Deaf Run, as in community cohesion, as in getting the community together to understand one another and to work together. The run itself it was deaf brothers and deaf um, deaf brothers and hearing brothers running together. Running doesn't require you to talk. It requires you to simply run. And it's just that simple concept that we held on to. And alhamdulillah year on year it's getting stronger as in the run itself is growing. But it's not just the run itself we have in Deaf Run. Yeah. I don't know if many viewers have actually gone to Deaf Run before but within Deaf Run you have these um, seven or in this uh, sometimes you have these inflatable challenges which again you don't need to talk to go through a challenge as in this, these are physically enduring you just challenge yourself so that we have the gladiator run the bungee run um, then we've got the sumo wrestling then we've got a salt course and it's literally you coming with your friends be it deaf or hearing you come together and you just enjoy it and you have and you go through these obstacles as well as that we've got stalls so we've got over 80 stalls, different varieties. It's like an, another bazaar for you to go to. And again, another beautiful thing that happened was, again, for stall holders, for them to actually have that deaf audience there. Sometimes you don't get that. So deaf, the deaf community are not aware of what's going on with the stalls. So this event actually put the stalls in front of the deaf people, and the deaf people are going to the shops, engaging with the shopkeepers. We've got interpreters there. They're buying things. It's like a normal thing for them now. That, and then... Um, We've also got the Hot Wing Challenge. Mm -hmm. So this is the spicy Hot Wing Challenge that takes place. I took place one year. I probably won't do it again, but... How does it work? It's the Hot Wing Challenge. So the Hot Wing Challenge um, it happens about th four, 3 o'clock, 3 to 4 o'clock. And we um, have um, Hot Wings. So this year, Alhamdulillah, I think it will be from Medina Grill as well. So they'll be giving us some spicy Hot Wings. That's r I've test tried them before. It's really spicy. So we have about 20 contestants lined up. Oh and no. then it's like, how many can you have? And it's like, it's literally... It must be very hot though. It's very it? hot. And it's, trust me, it's very fun to watch and be part of. So I recommend everyone to come together for this, for this part as well. And we've also got a tug of war tournament. Has, it, has anyone got injured? I mean, not injured, no, I'm talking no. about. Did you have a, um, a you know, medical and side? No, no medical issues. Ho, ho, ho. So then we've got a form where you have to take liability for your own like, actions and everything. But we've got that form, so it's all like well legally covered, <laughs> <laughs> so be cautious. But no one has ever been no, like, no, of course, it's for yeah. fun anyway. Yeah. That's good though, it's quite yeah. something, uh, yeah. You know, you know, when I was younger, actually, Bangladesh, we used to say, let's have a, a challenge with Russia, you know, okay. like uh, the misty, and that's Explain, how much we yeah. can eat. And you know, some people can, oh my god, you'll be shocked, yeah, you'll be shocked if you see them how much they can eat. And for they're not eating for eating anymore, no, they're no, eating for challenge. It's manhood, isn't it? <laughs> That's isn't it? It. It's like ego. <laughs> yeah, Who's gonna think it's yeah. ego? Who's gonna do it? I'll be honest with you, I'll participate, I probably will do it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I'll try that. Next time. I'll challenge you. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, okay, That's okay. a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have to take part in it. No, no. You'll stand no. next to me and we will do it together, inshallah. Oh, no. All right, let's try <laughs> then. I'll yeah. try that. Okay, so you know, like uh, uh, you're doing that different. Is, what are the thoughts behind? What are the ideas behind? What do you want to achieve by doing this kind of stuff for them? Okay. You know, this is like the brother said, subhanAllah, like, uh, they were happy. Even in the rain, they're happy. It you know, this is. It's what's the idea behind The it? idea behind it is to empower the deaf community, firstly. As in, this was like when we, when we do deaf run, when we did deaf run, it was the first deaf event for deaf brothers, as in, like, the name in itself is Deaf Run. It's not just a Muslim run or a charity run or whatever run. It's the Deaf Run. As in, it's something our Deaf brothers can hold on to. This is our run. This is something people are thinking about us and doing for us. And then when they see hearing, hearing brothers and sisters come together for the Deaf Run, as in, it's like literally saying, these people are coming for me. As in, you feel empowered. You feel loved by the community. You feel like people are aware of you. People are aware that deafness exists. So that's firstly, that's why when you come to Deaf Run and you see our uh, Deaf brothers and sisters, they've all got smiles on their face. Trust me, that's one of the first things I noticed from the first one. And every year you just see more and more Deaf brothers and sisters come in and with big smiles on their face and just enjoying the day. You have that, then you have the hearing side. That's just the Deaf side. You know, I'm, I'm feeling uncomfortable when you see hearing brothers. Yeah. <laughs> first time I'm hearing somebody saying to me, that yeah. means I'm, I can hear things. So yeah. you call me hearing brother. You know, to me it looks like, you know, yeah, talking to you. Yeah. when we call them deaf brothers, can you imagine how they... Exactly. 
it's not a bad word to get hearing, brother. Yeah. Like, it's just like, yeah, so what? Yeah. I know, of course, I've got, you know, like, yeah. when you call them. It's like, if you think about it, it's, I'm almost highlighting your ability. Whereas when I say deafness, I'm highlighting their disability. Right? That's what yeah. it is I'm doing. But that's things we take for granted again, yeah. isn't it? It's just a reminder that, alhamdulillah, I'm hearing. SubhanAllah. So it's just, that's why whenever we talk about brothers and sisters, we like to say deaf brothers and sisters, hearing brothers and sisters. Because we're all equal. We all have either hearing or we're deaf. So you've been with them for a long time. Um, yeah. Tell us uh, one or two stories about it. It's a, because story speaks itself. You know, it mm. gives you a idea you know, you guys are going through. Would you like to share the idea, you know, a story? Um, I've got two stories that I always say they go hand in hand. The first one was um, a deaf adult. Um, he was in a um, class with an imam that we hold every Friday after khutbah. We have an adult class. So he was in one of these classes. And this was very early on, actually. And he put his hand up to ask a question to the imam. And the question was, who is Allah? Think about that. An adult asking asking the Imam who is Allah. Imagine living your life as a 40 year old oh or 35 and ask, don't, not knowing who Allah is. Oh man. That's we are failures. It's not him. Yeah, no. it's we are failures. Yeah, we because failed. we are majority, remember? Mm. We're 99%. We are failures. Exactly. We can't even teach one person. That's something to really think about as in what have we done for this this Muslim brother? As in, we I know with humanitarian causes, we can almost see the immediate differences we make. And it's very easy to almost be swayed into donating towards saving lives. But w another way to think about this situation is we're also saving this brother's life by giving him, teaching him about Islam. So, so it's something we need to actually do for the community. But that saying, since we started our services, again, another story, this one's more beautiful as in this 14 year old I think he was 12 actually 12 or 13 he was again in the Islamic school so this is one of our services that we provide as well so he put his hand up to the Imam and what he asked the Imam I don't know me as a 12 year old probably never asked that he asked the Imam how do I get closer to Allah <laughs> look at the difference <laughs> and that's purely through education because this child understood who Allah is and what Islam is about so he asked that question I don't honestly, it's like that. When I heard that, I was like, subhanAllah, like so inspirational to hear that these deaf brothers and sisters who almost have nothing, like very limited services available to them, these brothers and sisters are striving to become stronger Muslims. And here we are. We have the world at our feet. We have everything there. And we pick time out where we might just read one ayah or we might just read one, one hadith. And we might actually action it. We might not. Probably not. As in, it's all probable maybe, but these brothers and sisters, they're dedicated. They want to learn about Islam. They want to go to Hajj. They, they want to do everything that we take for granted. And inshallah, that's what Ali Shara aims to do, is help these brothers and sisters learn about Islam and have everything available. But Mahfuz, why do you think, uh, if you could answer me, Bengali, the importance of the uh, <laughs> 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 Deafness. 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 Kilan definitely or hotazan ba ba itcha tak bosa hikta itcha tak to na. So main zini shul amna zuni shob e goror maze algi definitely or hota mat hota hodi. The amna goror bitre i definitely ikta almost aki ek door ebar kuchuna ek ek zini shtak bosa amna hikta farmu aror zantam farmu ba 
a zantan for market as available service especially also you know like amrazala hikta we have to learn our behaviors our words what we say when someone comes in and someone goes out what do we do salam kuriyo hota 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 ado hikayo those people the same thing they have to learn as well for example na hikay then they going to weird thing because they don't know what to do taki ba mona hora khayu jishma goro aida um hekki ba mona hora ami to tarala hanai i'm going to run away and some people can see that say this in adult jana kitai no like comments we make but that's not the case he haven't been we, we haven't taught him what to say masinda mona so we need to find place where they can go and learn first thing ma fit to ke ba hortoi be gya amar bachche de malo eta he where he can go and learn the number you have to look for someone who is um muslim is very important first choice should be muslims with khew of sand language jane you take him there and then he teaches that nele afna unno tara tara hikay but tara jeta jane he doesn't know your exactly. your concept of religion he doesn't know your culture so you can't blame him for anything he's just teaching something he knows mm. maybe he doesn't even believe in anything he may be atheist maybe he doesn't know anything about any other religion as well and if you so don't be asal how we going to know what he's signing we would yeah you need to have that trust as well and that's again that's what something ali shara provides trust that we will teach your child about islam and we'll teach them about islam not any other religion so if you i know you also been to um, hajj with the deaf muslims uh, umrah we did umrah, umrah yeah Afne, can you describe the whole uh, Hajj with us, please? With the Umrah, it's like this. I want the story, the way you read food, how you spoke to each other, what you've yeah. done. All, so all, the all Umrah that. itself, I didn't go to it. Okay. Because, but um, I spoke to the brothers who went. Okay. And there's actually a really good YouTube video on our channel, so please do watch it. And to be honest, that's the first thing I heard about Ali Shara when I saw that video. It was really heartwarming. But so basically, with the Umrah service, we teach them about Umrah itself here first. So that's the most most important by teaching the someone about umrah teaching them what to do there what what to do what not with the cloth how to wear it etc we teach everything there and once they're there they perform the umrah so the stories are like when i saw when i spoke to few brothers like they grew up with a dream as in to see the kaaba but for them to go on their own it's like a huge thing as in there aren't really great facilities out there for them to actually go and visit Saudi Arabia or go to Mecca as in, I, even for us it's very difficult going with the family as in it's so busy and it's so like as hearing people who can speak we get ignored now imagine how mm. our deaf brothers and sisters might feel so they went there um, and um, first thing you see the video and you listen to the experience it's just tears as in they're crying to Allah oh subhanallah not because they're deaf don't get me wrong they are proud to be deaf but they're crying because they've been they've had the opportunity to just go to the house of Allah and worship worship it it's like i don't know about you but for me i don't know how i would have reacted as in as a deaf person would i have asked allah why, why, allah why me but these brothers and sisters they were like alhamdulillah for the opportunity alhamdulillah for who i am alhamdulillah for everything you've given me we usually when we go um um to hajj umrah we straight away we make dua for everything we haven't got or something we want and these brothers and sisters they were like just grateful saying alhamdulillah is the first dua so that's just something like when i heard about them heard the stories it just just humbles you i mean the project itself you know it, it's so beautiful the project itself is so valuable to me i know to everybody has to be you're taking a group of people who uh the, you are the only uh, al ishara group can tell them what's going to happen is a big name sheikh imagine uh, sheikh abdul rahman sudai is afna ami fundam tan in every time mm. and with how much we love and all that stuff they can't they know who you are mm. and how beautiful you are to that brother or sister almost nothing and as far as the access to you are concerned this is subhanallah i don't know <laughs> do you get uh, uh, is there any other projects similar to yours that you can work together and make it a bigger impact that is the aim as in there are s- other small other charities out there in say north of england and they're doing very similar services but our aim is to become this one body as in work together in a cohesive way where we're benefiting the deaf community we're not 
creating different things for the deaf brothers is about working together as one unit, as in one Islam, because Islam is one. And that's something we want to encourage all our brothers and sisters to do, as in work together, as in not as separate entities, not as um, organizations who are doing, look at another organization and do something similar or do something different just to get more fame or nothing. I think one thing I can assure everybody watching or listening is Ali Shara, we're not here for the name. As soon as we know the deaf Ummah are happy on their own and they can get Islam going on, we've got Islam, uh, deaf scholars, there is no need for Ali Shara anymore. We don't want the name. Do we have a deaf, um, a deaf scholars? In here? Not in B British Sign Language, okay. not yet. So that's what we want to aim to do. We want to make sure our the kids who come to our Islamic school, they carry on the Do journey. you have anyone who wants to become a scholar? Uh, we do have a few students who want to learn more about the deen and go further. So inshallah, with your du'as, that can happen. You know, you can get sponsors for um, who wants to do that. Mm. I know somebody can sponsor. Okay, that might be very... That would be a good idea. Yeah. They can go and learn that. I don't know how that can happen, but yes, um, we could do that. Also, can you ask our friends, you know, viewers, if they can come to the project you got doing running. When is your uh, the running date? The deaf? the deaf run is next Saturday. Okay, so what so are you expecting us to... Well, firstly, I, w I personally want to see everybody there. And I want to see, as the whole community, they like it. In the past few years, we've had 5,000 people attending. Sure. Inshallah, we want to smash that record this year. We want at least 10,000. Um, uh, this is me being very optimistic, but you know what? Let's aim high and let's get that 10,000. We want everybody to come down, even if it's for a few minutes. I want you to come down, participate in the run. Because, again, the run is so important. I mean, it's, it's easy to uh, come late to the event. Just come to the run. Raise as much as you can, but come to the run and just run for your brothers and sisters. Where, when and where? Um, it's happening in Milan Park next Saturday um, from 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Um, again, all the attractions are there. We've also got Kid Zone, I forgot to mention. So we've got um, Chuckles the Clown, um, Spark, Sparkles the Stilt Man, and we've got Ali Shara Bear coming as well. So we've got quite a few things, and, and a bouncy castle, animal balloons. So it's, it's, there's everything for every single member of your family. Yeah, I saw in the posters, uh, name Ali is going to wear that. Yeah, who, Ali, so the Ali Sharabe. Oh, is he? Who's, which, have, have I met him? Oh. Um, I can't say. Oh, Ali's no, a secret. Oh, no. okay. Ali's a secret. <laughs> and there's a few more surprises on the day that, honestly, you can't miss it. Everybody needs to be there. You know, it's not about, brother and sister, it's not about um, fundraising. Part of it's fundraising. Yeah. But it's about taking your own kids the hearing one, and meet those deaf you know, children as well. And they will meet and they will learn. They will get used to it. Afna amar ashole shudhu gui sena ashole iroh amar shol dekha lagi. Boronom bari khanu dola hoya. Lagi amar ashole thara mani kharafur na balo khoriyono. We don't know actually. That's the thing. We haven't learned it. Thara thara solra. Okay. But for our kids, because it's increasing, that's the only way if they get to meet them and talk to them and say some language, something like that. You know, this, this will improve their own behavior. This will improve their behavior and then normalize things, inshallah. And if they, some of our deaf brothers comes into my house, then he's going, oh, I met somebody like that before. For that person, it won't be the first time they're meeting somebody. Yeah. It just, if, if you meet somebody the first time, and think, oh, I didn't know what to do. So, so I left him around, let it be, you know, all that stuff. That's not the case. And we shouldn't think. They're walking, they drive cars, they're successful. They have amazing things going for them. So we need to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do we get encourage our young people come to that day and meet these young, you know? What can we do, Jamil? Well, I've been doing that last couple of days. It's just in terms of promoting, I guess, through social media. Since a lot of young people are on social media, uh, you can publicize the event for a lot of social platforms, uh, as well as just people talking between each other. So if you like, if a friend went last year, even them talking to other friends that come down is quite a good event. And I like how you said about little kids bringing them down and breaking that barrier because you don't want it to be a new entity, like you said, like a kid, like when they see them for the first time, they'll be in shock, like, what's wrong with this guy? But there's actually nothing wrong with him. It's just you need to learn how to communicate with them. And um, yeah, that's, that's, see, that's it. You know, um, when I met, um, went to your office actually, so after I, uh, the interview, I went back again, again. I met them. I have this habit of make, talking to people first. That's what I normally do. And you start the buzz. If you, if you can start something positive, then you, all things goes positive. That's what I mm. see. 
So I went to the office and, and um, I didn't know what to do, so they sent language and stuff like that. But honestly, I felt so welcomed by the... Because they were smiling and saying, oh, yeah. I just felt, well, I, don't, I don't know what to do. <laughs> honestly, I didn't know what to do. But because they seen me before, they knew I, I, was, I was your friend and they, when they welcomed me in the office, honestly, I felt so good. And I came out and talked to them, I said, subhanAllah, we, we think that, because we haven't met them, we think something they will be totally different. That's how we think, but that's mm. not right. Um, we only got two more minutes. Would you like to see your last word to our viewers? Uh, final words would be, come down to the event next Saturday and check it out. Um, I'd say bring down your family, take part in the run, and just enjoy yourself. Yeah. And also uh, try volunteer as well. Just don't come to the run. If you've got time, I'd say like me, it's quite, it's quite a good experience to have. And get in, you get to f understand more knowledge into it as well. Mohamed would you like to say to our viewers in the last minute to you say can't something. stress how uh, much you'd miss it if you don't come to the event. So save the date, 13th of August, um, Saturday, this next, not this Saturday, the upcoming Saturday, Mile End Park, 10 o'clock to 6 p.m. Come run, jog, walk, take part of the challenges. There's a children's zone, come with your kids, your family, your grandparents, everybody come. It's a day you will definitely not forget, so please do come. Can women take a role as well? Can women run as well? Yes, there's yeah. a definitely. That's one thing we want to promote, as in sisters getting out there and running and be taking, um, participating. So there's something, like I mentioned, there's something for everybody. Brothers, sisters, grandparents, everybody. Inshallah, do come down and you'll enjoy it. Okay. So, Bhai Gunera, um, thank you for staying with us. You know, the things we said, um, firstly, myself, I got emotional. Um, this, is, this is the time to show our action. You know, everything I said now about deaf Muslims, it's my time to show the actions. What I've said, it make, I mean it, you know. I meant it. So, inshallah, I have a fun day out. And also, the deaf Muslims that are some targets, they have to uplifting me, both now. When they see Speech. us supporting them. And the money they're going to write, it's, it's going to go to the Hajj, it's going to go to Quran class. It's going to go to the um, right place, definitely. You know, so we need to do that. Um, so hope to see you on Saturday, yeah, inshallah. And inshallah. you guys, you know, amazing. You know, we we'll make so we we'll make dua for you, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.